Hi everybody, it's Richard here again and welcome to another video. Um, this is a response to a 10 question thread I set up by Ron Haggerty the other day. I thought some of the questions were great so I thought I would jump on it. Okay, there's 10 questions and each number actually has a meaning. So question 1 is uh, a one-off band with one studio album. And I'm going to do uh, two of these, one for a band and one for a female singer. The band is The Chords and this is a mod revival band from 1980, highly influenced by the jam and the same sort of uh, ilk as A Secret Affair, uh, the Purple Hearts, Lambrettas uh, and so forth. Uh, mod Revival from the late 70s. This came out in 1980. It's not bad. It's got a couple of good singles on it. Maybe Tomorrow, Something's Missing and a decent cover of The Beatles, She Said, She Said. So yeah, they only had this album. There were a couple of compilation albums, but this is their only studio album. And the female singer with only one album, and this is Paul Weller related, and it's Tracy, Far From The Hurting Kind, released in 1984, I believe. Two singles off this, um, I Love You When You Sleep, which is a reworking of the Elvis Costello song, Billy Porterhouse, I think that's what you call it, from the uh, Goodbye Cruel World album, and Souls on Fire. She had a few more singles. Um, her biggest hit was a top 10 hit with um, The House That Jack Built, and then she had another top 30 with uh, Give It Some Emotion. But there's a few decent songs on it. It's not brilliant. It's not bad. It's like she's like the girl next door that made it uh, half big. Um, the song itself, uh, Far From The Hurting Kind, is a really great little sort of Motown inspired number. Uh, I Love You When You Sleep is a fantastic song. Um, and Dr. Love's not bad as well. I think that was a B-side. It's not brilliant, but it's, it's not bad. Question two, two of a kind. Album titles um, or band names are the same title, but I'm going to go with album titles. And the absolutely brilliant Tapestry by Carl King, which everybody should actually own. It's a fantastic album. But another Tapestry, which I think is every bit as good, and it's Don McLean's Tapestry. And this is the one with um, And I Love You So on it and uh, Magdalene Lane and um, what's the other one I really like? Uh, Circus Song. Um, this is an absolutely fantastic album. I really do prefer this to the American Pie album. It's the one before. I uh, think it's magnificent. Okay, question three. Three times a charm. Took three albums to click. Well, the first two I thought were actually quite good, but the third one was a big step up. Um, it's the Beach Boys. And the first one is Surf and Safari, which is fine. It's it's nothing brilliant, but it's pleasant enough. Um, and a similar vein is Surf in USA. But for me, the, their third album, which is Surfer Girl, really did step up the mark. Um, Surfer Girl, fantastic. In My Rooms, fantastic. It's got a little disc coupe on it, Catch a Wave. It's just a really, really good surf album, and to me, it is much better than the previous two. Um, four in a row, four perfect albums, and I have been showing this band every time I get the opportunity. Vampire Weekend, their debut. Vampire Weekend, Contra. Vampire Weekend, Modern Vampires in the City, my personal favourite and Vampire Weekend, The Double Father of the Bride. Absolutely brilliant band. The Fifth Dimension, Space um, or Within. Uh, well, I'll show this one here. This is a landscape album from 1981 and it's from the ballrooms of Mars, so that there qualifies. This is the one with Einstein and Gogo and Modern, or Modern, and Norman Bates. Um, it's, it's, it's alright, it's not a bad album, it's a bit weird, but it's not too bad. Um, a six member band, and I'm going to go with this one, and it's the Beautiful South Choke. Now, uh, they were a five member band for their first album with uh, Brianna Corrigan, 
not an official member, but she became an official member to make this up to six. So that's Paul Heaton, Brianna, Dave uh, Hemingway, Dave Rotheray, Sean Welsh, and Dave Steed. So six members. This is the most difficult question of the lot, I thought. Uh, number seven, God's Number. And uh, so a name of a band or artist with God in the title. I'm going to go with this one. This is Changing Moods, the best of 10cc and God, Light and Cream. It's a very good album. It's got obviously got the big 10cc hits on it and the few big Godly and Cream ones as well. Uh, number eight, A Number of Unity, and we'll go for a couple of songs here. The Strobes, This is Bursting at the Seams, and the song Part of the Union, which is just nothing like anything else in the album. It's more like a novelty song, and so it says a union song, as in a uh, work union. So I'll pick that and I'll also pick The Farm. Uh, it's all together now. Okay, at number nine, number of finality or completion. So um, last record for a certain member. And this is The Bangles and this is their 1982 EP and this is before they made it big. And their bass player at this time was a girl called Annette Zelinskis. And she was then replaced by uh, Michael Steele. So I go with that one. And finally, number 10, The X Factor, a band with X in the title. And we'll go with Generation X. This is the best of Generation X. And this has obviously Billy Idol uh, there. Okay, uh, it's funny, this album doesn't have your generation on it, which I can't believe, because it's probably one of my favourite singles of theirs, but it's actually a very good album. Okay, that was a fun thread by Ron. Um, I, th I think a lot of people will jump on this one. Um, so, yeah, hope to have another video quite soon. All the best now. Bye-bye.